Um, today we're going to talk about mobile tracking and measurement. Um, uh, we won't, I won't throw away a lot of report metrics and so on. It will really be about how to win, how to um, use a framework to really track the right metrics and help you on your business. Because this is also the point of data, is to, to get business done. Uh, I will start with a, a personal story. I, I've been playing handball for the last 20 years. So um, handball, I, uh, I think you all know what, what it is. And, and I've been winning a lot, losing a lot. And, and I realized that when we were winning, all of the players had a clear understanding of what the performance is expected from them. So I, 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 we won, for example, twice the, the US championship with the team of New York when I was there. And I'm goalkeeper. As a goalkeeper, you're supposed to save shots. If I'm saving 30% of shots, the team will be quite all right, quite OK, good job. If I will be saving 40%, there'll be, mm, this is really helpful. We can really win the game. If, we do, if I save 50%, the, the opponent is like, is, 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 is done. He's is, is not even trying to shoot again. It's, it's, it's quite, quite cool. But on, on those winning teams, every player knows which performance he has to achieve. And this performance can be metric. If, if, if you are a shooter, for example, you know that if you're sh uh, shooting from the center, you need to score at least 50% of your shots. If you're missing tw 20%, something wrong, you need to change something, or the coach with a side needs to, to, to have this metric, this, this knowledge to be able to, to, to change the, the players, change combination, and, and win eventually. So really when, when I see all those like, great players knowing exactly what they have to do, everything is more clear. And uh, I think data and measurement is about that, it's really about knowing which performance you have to, to deliver to, to win on your, on your business. Um, I will give you a, another example. I, I've been really impressed. We, we all um, uh, recognize this picture. Any Germans here? Ooh, no Germans. Yes, one here. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, a German team, great players, great co coach, but that other teams had that. Uh, what the German team had and not the other team had was the partnership with IBM collecting any kind of data during the game and providing this data to, to Joachim Lowe, who is the coach of the, of the uh, German national team, about which player is not running as fast as he usually run, which player maybe miss Holly's pass to another player, or any kind of metrics. And Joachim Lowe is not a data scientist. He wants few data points where he can take a decision. He doesn't want the huge reports as we have on Google Analytics because he wants to take the right metric and take the right decision. And this is, I think, you're all in the same situation. In order to be the best on your, on your uh, business, you need to have the right information. So. Uh, they eventually won. Uh, we cannot say that it's thanks to data, but it can help. It can help. Great player. Um, another example, which is more on the, uh, on, on, uh, more related to you, is Booking.com. So I'm the industry analyst for uh, the, the telco business in, uh, in the Netherlands. I've been working at Google for three years now. I've been focusing a lot on mobile. And, and what we saw, and this is something because before working at Google, I was in, Euro, in New York working in a business intelligence team of Orange, the telco. What, what I saw five years ago is that all the big companies already had a mobile website. And, and I arrived three years ago in Europe, and none of the big companies in Europe had a mobile website. Almost none. Big opportunity in front of everyone. Everybody's missing it. Uh, Booking.com is a great, successful uh, uh, travel company. They do, in 2013, 17.5% of their business uh, revenue is 
coming from mobile. Here we are talking of, of, of millions because they do uh, eight billions of revenue from mobile. So I, I think, yes, it's possible on the business side to be successful on, on mobile. But it all starts with one thing, with what is the consumer doing? So I did a lot of mobile conversion workshops with, with any kind of uh, advertisers the last two years. And what I'm going to show you is I really think like the three main insights you need to know about mobile before taking any choice, about launching a mobile website, an application, or any kind of uh, action you want to take. First, is that all the person looking at Google.com are increasingly looking on the mobile. You have seen that. This is the number of queries, sorry, the share of queries coming from mobile. So now it started at 0% in 2009. And in 2014, it goes to 27%. So it's nice to say, okay, today is 27%, but still it's not the most part of my business. The key question is what is going to be in one, two, or three years? Because if we just take this curve and bring it to the end of the year, it's already 30%. Even a bit higher, 33%, we're talking of one third. What it will be in one year and a half? One year and a half is tomorrow. We all know that in one year and a half is going to be, what, maybe 40%. Yeah, well, Humans are really bad at forecasting, so this is why I didn't want to, to, to draw the line on and, and making really uh, just a general view. So this movement is going to move. And what is really interesting, you all heard about the new iPhone 6. And uh, it's really interesting to see how, how screens are getting bigger. I don't know if you realize on the smartphone, screens are getting bigger and bigger. With a bigger screen on the smartphone, here I have the, the last FG G3. When I show that to people, wow, this is huge. Yeah, but with this smartphone, I can do much more things than on any other smartphone that I have a smaller screen. And what we see is that today, the iPhone, no, yesterday, the iPhone 6, so the big one is as big as at this FG, uh, G3. So it's a trend that we're seeing that those, the, the screens are, are getting bigger and bigger and actually the consumer likes it. So basically they're going to be able to do even more things on their mobile. And this is a key uh, component to, to, to take into consideration. Uh, we have this debate application versus mobile website. Uh, what to do on which part? First of all, uh, on, this, on the left part here, you have the time spent on site in blue, and on, on gray you have the time, time spent on apps. So now you see that it's only 14% on mobile website, so it's almost nothing. The so time spent on apps is, around, is, is much bigger, we're talking of, of 86%. But what happens is that the time spent on apps, we are talking of 40% gaming, Gaming, I mean, you're not selling anything on gaming. It just is, is almost a substitution of the, 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 the PlayStation of other platform where we were all playing at. Secondly, social, so Facebook, Twitter, um, any other, Google Plus, obviously, and others. So basically what we see in this part here is like, actually you don't really have transaction related action happening on application. It's more a customer relationship maybe, gaming or social, but it's not a central platform to, to really generate uh, business. What we see on the other hand, and this is the right part uh, of the graph, is the primary channel for a transaction. So for a consumer to, to, to buy something is happening 66% on, on sites. <coughs> and this is a key insight here, is that users, even they, if they spend not too much time on mobile website. This is where they evaluate your product, where they evaluate um, the prices, and where they're going to maybe check out if you have a good mobile website. So think about, okay, if I have an application, maybe it's more for relationship, maybe giving some information. So we see like the, 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 the finance sector is doing that very well, the banking industry with application where you can handle everything. You, you almost don't need to go to the, to, to the bank, uh, to the physical place. 
So, um, so mobile websites are crucial in order to allow you to, to, to make, to make uh, business on mobile. This is um, a case study that has been done with Galerie Lafayette. So I guess uh, most part of you have been to Paris. Galerie Lafayette is this uh, nice big store in the center where you see a lot of uh, Asian people uh, who love it. Um, and what we realized is that, with, this is with universal analytics, sorry, uh, is that actually they could track, okay, what people are doing on which screen, sequentially. And what we realized is that, no, not me, the team would took care of that, what they realized is that basically mobile was used for two main steps. First, entry. So when I mean entry is, okay, let's check a product. Let's check uh, a new blouse or shoes or whatever. Then to process or initiate the checkout, they were going to the next level down, which is the tablet. And last but not least, for the, really the, the purchase itself, they would do it on a desktop. So they will start on mobile. Some of them then check on tablets to make sure that is the product they want, maybe start to bring the item to the, to the basket, and then they will switch to the desktop and make the purchase there. But it's not finished because they will check then on mobile if the order status is, is, is going well, if their order is there, if it's going to be delivered in a few days. So, so, so what we saw, and this is really interesting about digital, is that before you would go to a shop, buy it, and goodbye. Today, you don't go to a shop first, but you go to different places or to, to different platforms till the moment you, you, you make the purchase. So basically, it's being more fragmented, more fragmentation. So, the, so it's getting much more complicated. And this is uh, related to my next point. What do we have? We have consumer. We have ads on mobile, desktop, tablets. We have a site. And we need to consolidate all that together to make your job easier to, find the, to take the right decision with data. And it's complex. It's really not easy. You guys have already, this morning, I think, talk, uh, heard about attribution. Uh, uh, we are doing huge progress, but it's still uh, a lot to do. Uh, a lot of us, so I was on the booth there, and a lot of uh, you guys asked me about how to track offline uh, conversion on Google Analytics or Universal Analytics. So we are improving on this area, but it's still uh, a lot to do there. So it's, it's not easy, and you won't get out of this session with like, the magic answer, oh, tomorrow I know how to do that, but I will help you to, to, to bring the data together and, and, and get your insight. First step, and this is uh, really the base. Like, if you don't prepare a framework or a place or like some processes in your company where every person will be aware of the metrics they need to get to follow because digital has really allowed that to have all those metrics. If you don't do that, you're going to have a report for yourself and it's going to be difficult to, to impact the rest of the organization. And also, the second newest thing is that on Google Analytics, you might have thousands of metrics, maybe, maybe, yeah, so probably thousands, and you just want to focus on a few of them because those are the only ones who matters, that matters for your business. And this is why I'm going to introduce you to, to two main framework um, that will first allow you to, to make this selection for your business, which <laughs> metrics are relevant for you. And it's only then that we will drill down into the concrete metric that is that for me seems the most relevant. But, and ladies and gentlemen, we never did that before in the foundry. You're the first one to have the honor to do a selfie contest. So I will ask everybody to grab their smartphone. Do you all have smartphone? Yes. <laughs> uh, stand up, please. We'll do a bit of, of relaxation, gym. Great. So uh, 
what, what we're going to do is uh, a selfie contest. Selfie contest, basically, you will take a picture with your neighbor, with the technical guys behind, oh no, they won't like, <laughs> they're okay. Uh, whoever you think, uh, uh, to have a, f a funny, just a nice selfie of the event for yourself. And then you're going to tweet it to uh, a hashtag, which is um, mobile 10x. So I guess you guys, uh, uh, most part of you have Twitter, so you just tweet it and mobile 10x. So please, guys, uh, start taking this picture with, with whoever you want, and, uh, and we move ahead with that. Can we switch to demo, uh, please? Good job, I'm seeing. Okay, now you can um, you can share it on uh, on uh, Twitter uh, again. Um, hashtag mobile ten x. I would try to take a selfie with you guys. This is never done before, neither. Let's see if we have something cool. Uh, I, will, I will just do it. Oof, there's a light here. Let me step down like that. Yes, okay, guys, here I want everybody's uh, arms up and so on. Come on, guys. <laughs> yes, very good. Great. I will share it later on. Um, so let's see if we have people here who would dare to share their amazing selfie. Yes, wow, <laughs> Drew, Drew, good job here. I recognize you guys. Let's see, what do we have here? Caroline, Caroline Simpson, let's check what do we have here. Yes, nice one. This is a spirit, I like it, guys. Yes, good one. Guys, this is amazing, keep going, keep going. <laughs> okay, I'll do a, a, a last. Last one. Oh, we have many more here. Let's let's try to estimate how many do we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we might have twenty. Uh, let's say we have twenty here. Okay. Can we can we switch back to the uh, to the presentation? Yes. Okay. Um, what I tried to to explain you on this exercise is is the difference between micro conversion and macro conversion. Macro conversion, in this specific case, was the number of people who tweeted a picture. So now I saw around 20 tweets, and this was my number of conversion, basically. However, I don't know if you remember, I asked you, mm, maybe not all of you have Twitter, please. Is there uh, all the person who have Twitter? Can you please put your arms up? Okay, I'm seeing basically Half, half, yes, 50%. So basically, if I want to increase my, my conversion by two, I need all of you to have Twitter here, because only half of you have it. And this is a crucial element on mobile, because a lot of person, first meeting I have with clients often around mobile, yeah, conversion rates are ridiculous. Traffic is not that high. Well, we don't have a mobile website, okay, it's crappy. But it's a bit like if none of you here would have had Twitter. So as long as you don't have certain basics right, you cannot have uh, a macro conversion, you cannot have an, a good conversion rate, you cannot have uh, 
uh, a very good business case on, on mobile for you. So this is this will be uh, a bit uh, also a reason why you, you need a framework is how you take into consideration to those, those micro conversion. So I will, uh, oh yeah, we are already there. Uh, I will uh, present to you two frameworks. The first one is from Avinash Koshik. Avinash Koshik is a bit the guru of digital measurement. So if you want to, to if you're interested in that, I'm, how many of you know Avinash? Have you? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, good, good job. So for the one who doesn't know him, he's, uh, he's a Googler. Uh, this guy is impressive. He decided at some point to share his knowledge with all, all the rest about digital. And he is one of the, the main person, go-to person when we talk of digital measurement, basically. And he defined a framework divided in four points. See, think, do, care. And for every of those, those points, the key question is what are you doing as a business to reach? So here we are obviously talking of a consumer. A consumer we see is like someone just imagine that you're wondering about maybe getting a new jacket, maybe getting a new pair of shoes or a new smartphone. And, and you're just reading news, not even knowing if you're going to buy something. So, so this is really the early stage. Here we are talking of brand awareness, how you trigger a person. And the second step is think. think they are evaluating you. They are checking, are you delivering interesting product for myself? Are your shoes amazing and I will convert it? So here there are also some metrics to look at. Do, do is about conversion. Is how well do you realize the conversion? How well is the user experience on your, on your website? So it's really about action. Last but not least, and is the most underestimate, underestimated one that I noticed since I'm at Google um, is care. So internet has been growing a lot the last 10 years. We all had amazing growth, but it's getting more competitive, getting, finding more uh, actors in the market that are offering the same thing. So what we realize is that a lot of companies are starting to to focus on their customer base and really try to upsell, cross-sell, reaching them another way to really create a trust, conf uh, trust relationship. And this is uh, uh, another uh, part that I, I strongly uh, recommend to, to talk about. So this is the first framework. You have amazing article on, uh, on the Avinash blog post about that. So I won't talk about it. Uh, I will talk about uh, a framework I developed is, uh, from the result of this mobile conversion workshop. Um, and this is, uh, is based on customer journey. So have you, th th all of you have seen that? I'm pretty sure that some of you have seen that. Arms up? No, okay, great. This is um, a model that we use at Google uh, about customer journey. So customer journey starts with a, 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 a stimulus, which start here, it can be a trigger also, as they call it in another model. Then it is what we call at Google the zero moment of truth, is the, this big bubble in the middle. Previously I was explaining to you how the, the, the customer journey is being more and more fragmented. It's because we have more choice, we, ha we can compare, there are more websites, and it's happening here. This is where basically, for the, I work in the telco industry, between the moment person knows they want a new phone and the moment they purchase it, it happens around uh, 30 days, if I'm, yes, around 30 days. So we're talking of full months. This full month is here. We're talking of uh, many websites, many price comparisons. Uh, then there is a purchase. This is what naturally as, as online marketing, we tend to focus the most. We really look at that. Do we have we do A-B tasting, the button go, make it a bit more up, right? Sometimes we forget about this other part. And then post-purchase, I told you, your customer base is the most precious thing you have. Uh, if you have your competitors getting, uh, getting that from you, you're going, uh, it's going to be difficult. 
So the other purpose, okay, how you, how you help your existing client, how you, you upsell, cross-sell, how you create this relationship I was talking about. And, and what we see is that if you define three or four customer journeys, so a customer journey can be uh, 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 a mother uh, between 30 and 40 who looks for uh, a new code and who uh, actually is already an existing customer of yours. You know that at this stage she will look at other websites. But you know also that she's already a client of yours, so how you will reach her? Because it's more important to reach her there than actually on the checkout, because she, if she makes the, the decision before, then you have, you, 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 you won basically against your competitors. So what my, this model is really about looking at the full picture post-purchase, uh, uh, and focusing to six points. First is findability. I see when I talk about findability is, are you there offline? It can be offline. I'm going to focus on online for obvious reasons. Uh, um, we are talking of queries. Are you on google.com? Are you on mobile? Uh, are you on, with, there with some display ads maybe to really like when we are at this point here, so the, the customer is already thinking about you. Secondly, is about content. How is your website performing? Uh, are your bounce rates on certain page on mobile going 80%? 80% uh, on mobile website, I saw that a lot of time. So it's not a crazy number. Is your load speed on your mobile website 15 seconds, well, it happens. It happens for a lot of big companies. So uh, content, you cannot, and I include load speed in content because this is the time they spend on your website. So those are metrics you can already think about. Call to action. I showed you before the case of Galerie Lafayette. What was the message? The message is if you allow the mobile user to carry on his experience on desktop or another platform, if you help him, like, okay, put your email there and we send you the link of the product that you're looking at. Or just next to the product, a call, a click to call button. You're helping him in this case. You're using mobile to drive conversion in other platforms. So the call to action on mobile, and this today we're talking of mobile, is one of the things I think you have the most to win. Check out. Uh, you guys know conversion rate. So, uh, um, follow up. So, this is what I was uh, talking about. Okay, your customer, you want it, but what do you do to keep him? Do you send newsletter? Do you reach him another way? And last but not least, time to action. Time to action is the total time for the full experience. The, uh, what we. Uh, used to say is that every user spend in average 30 seconds on their mobile website. So they only stay 30 seconds. Are you able in 30 seconds to have a checkout on your mobile website? So this is the uh, next point. Uh, so this is an example. Numbers are more or less right, but uh, the, the main idea is there. Uh, this is uh, one of those workshops I did with a really big company, actually. And this is, uh, we took the customer journey of an existing client on mobile. So we are talking of a company who has thousands of thousands of people going into their mobile website and wanting to, to buy a new product. Okay? Here you see findability, they're amazing. They are on google.com, they're doing a great job. Content is all right. Uh, is call to action, they have nothing, so they are missing a lot of uh, uh, cross-device conversion. Checkout, impossible. We tried. We sit down with seven marketeers of this big company and big silence. We were trying, trying, impossible. We were one step that locked us. We couldn't go ahead. 
And it's only when you, 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 you move as a client, you think as a client, you do this customer journey I showed you that you find this kind of insight. So after that, it's quite curious the action. You don't need to be super advanced to resolve the problem and have that going down. And then follow-ups, they were great, but they were not converting anything, so it's totally useless. All clear? Yes? Uh, so uh, I was saying, okay, framework. Do you know the framework now? We're starting by getting the basics right. So I, I, I'm pretty sure that all, all of you already know quite a bit of that. So I will, I will go quite, quite uh, briefly on that. But first, uh, we have this amazing tool, Google Analytics. Uh, have, I think we're really lucky to be able to have such kind of tool. A uh, few things that are quite interesting. Uh, in our case, there is a lot of data around mobile, so you would be able to find almost, or I mean, as much as you found on, on desktop. So in terms of, of data tracking, you have enough information. Uh, the really nice thing also uh, is about remarketing. So I was telling you, okay, how you can care of your customer a bit more. If you know that visitors have been, uh, an existing client has been on your website during five, 10 minutes looking to some product and he didn't convert, you can use Google Analytics to create a list, remarketing list, and then remarket it uh, with the display advertising on the specific products. So you, you, you can go quite a long way with Google Analytics. But first, on Google Analytics, there are reports. So the main one you all know is the website report, so it's with all the data. One thing that can be nice to do is to just do one for mobile traffic only. And it's quite easy to do. So you can create a mobile report, you go to the admin section and just adding a new, a new view, you can select which data you want. And here, you, if you want only mobile traffic, you will have a report with only mobile data, which is a good starting point to know, okay, how many, how, what traffic I have? Is it increasing, decreasing? Do I have, um, what's my bounce rate on my main pages? Which product do I sell more on mobile? So, so quite simple, but quite uh, crucial. On, on mobile app, we have exactly the same. You can create a report for mobile app. Now it's, it's not natural because it's a section apart. So it's not within the, uh, the rest of the traffic. You need to create another view. It's exactly the same process as before. Admin, create view with an app. And you have an amazing report again where you can look at a lot of things. Uh, I have some uh, uh, visuals if you want. I can show you later on. Um, yes, yeah, this is uh, what I call it is an easy win link Google Analytics when you have it with uh, AdWords. You can track better conversion. You can um, actually even made, uh, make bids based on, on some metrics you have on Google Analytics. So for example, if a visitor, now if you know that a certain keyword has a higher conversion rate than another, you can import this data and increase the bids on the on AdWords. So again, a basic thing, but if you don't have that, uh, it's not right. Uh, Google, Google Tag Management, I won't really focus on that because I think you already had uh, some content. Uh, it, it can be just quite handy and uh, quite efficient. What I notice a lot of time in big corporation is that every time you need to implement a, long, a new tag, you need to contact the engineer the engineer needs to ask the superior if he can do it, and then you have the policy guy coming. It's a nightmare. So uh, Google Tag Management, you only have one, and you can in, uh, implement the tag yourself. So this can be quite convenient. Uh, once we have the basics right, uh, and this is when the interesting part starts, when we can have some fun. Well, it's not that funny, but uh, as an analyst, because it's, it's quite nice to be able to sometimes to, to, do, to find things that are helping businesses. Um, first thing is all about segmenting. So have your traffic and think about, okay, 
what do I want to look at? Do I want to look at device traffic, so you can segment by devices? Do I want to look per page, so you're going to segment per page? So really think about, okay, what do I want and how I will segment it to reach my, my, uh, my metric? Uh, so, yes, as I mentioned before, uh, in this framework, start by defining your key customer journey on your business. So it's quite different according to the businesses. So really um, um, define yourself, like what are the four or five categories of customer you're really focusing on. Uh, and again, think about existing clients. Once you have that, uh, we, we are going to go to, through the six points, uh, one by one, and, uh, and look at which metrics can be relevant. Regarding findability, I think, there is a part about offline, about um, maybe uh, even like yeah, newspaper, TV, or this part that you need to do. Uh, are you findable there? Uh, but there is an other part that is digital. Uh, here is a really, I think, concrete example is mobile traffic. You might have seen all of you this thing. Sorry, uh, it's quite small, but. Basically, we have different channels, direct, organic search, social, referral, paid search, display, generic, paid search. So all the traffic are on your website are coming from these different places. So now, here in this example is interesting because uh, organic search has 0.41% uh, conversion rate, so it's the highest in this, in this uh, channel. So if I would do an action out of that, I say, how can I double this traffic on my organic search? Because this is where I get the most searches on and the highest conversion rate. This is where I get, I, I get uh, a lot of uh, business, basically. So a good way of say, okay, let's set a target. What if the target is to increase by two your traffic on organic, organic search? Uh, so you can then implement action, SEO, brand awareness, uh, paid search campaigns. So the, the total amount of search increases. And you, if you can increase your amount of traffic from paid search by, uh, sorry, from uh, organic search per two, then, uh, well, your, your sales would be quite, uh, doing quite good. So here I did segment it per channel and with the con only with the conversion rate, you get a very good uh, input you can work on. So you don't need to go much, uh, too much into detail, really like take the most important one. Here we have three channels that are doing most part of the traffic. Work with that, you will have much more impact. Uh, next, findability. So uh, as, as, as a Googler and uh, I work with uh, some of you, uh, we work on the paid search, so I'm going to introduce you to two metrics for paid search that I think are really relevant. The first one is uh, query coverage. So what we call query coverage is in a specific category that is linked to your business, is the, 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 the share of impression you have from all the queries. So let's say we are on the uh, code business in France, there are 10 queries and you, you're delivering one impression on those 10 queries because you, you just have a budget for one impression. Your query coverage is 10%. Okay. Why, why is important? If we're talking of the most important category for your business and your query coverage is only 10%, you're missing 90% of the organic search. So query coverage really allows you to have an idea, okay, how, Am I there or not on Google.com? Am I present? Uh, those are data that the um, account manager with we are working can provide with um, and is always quite eye-opening. Uh, click share is a bit similar, but we're just talking of, of clicks. So if on this um, example of the code, there are uh, 10 clicks and five are going to my website, there is a, a, a click share of 50%. On this case, uh, on this graph, you see the click share separated by desktop and, uh, and uh, mobile. So what you see that this actor and this is what something we see a lot. 
has a very strong presence on, on desktop, and on mobile has a lower uh, query coverage. So here what we're seeing is that uh, you all guys know that CPC are going probably higher on your business, but you also know that on mobile is half. So maybe it makes sense to have the other way around here. Should the, the, the query coverage should be higher on mobile, which is the red one, and desktop getting lower on the next, for example, six months. So if you're considering to really switch to mobile first category, think about this section about paid search and get high query coverage, high click share on your specific section on search uh, in order to, to get the right traffic, in order to be findable, all right? Content, load speed and bounce rate. I'll be frank with you. When I started my conversion workshops, what, load speed and bounce rate? This is so obvious, we shouldn't even look at it. Well, guys, have a look to your mobile website, load speed and bounce rate. I will try to, yes, to, to do a demo so you get a feeling how to, to look at that on, on, um, on Google Analytics. So let me um, get my, my laptop waking up. If we can switch on demo mode, please. Can we please switch on, uh, yes, perfect. Uh, ah. <laughs> here we go, site speed, let me. Okay, on site speed here, um, what we see, uh, this is for all sessions. Uh, so this means it includes, um, yeah, desktop and mobile. What we see is that the, the load speed in average is 3.5 seconds. Quite frankly, it's quite decent. Uh, the, uh, a good loading speed is three seconds, I would say. Uh, and what I'm seeing, so here, okay, I didn't just show you, but on, on the menu on the left, if you go on behavior and then uh, site speed, you get those numbers. And, and what, what I, I see when I put this data for mobile website, and really, if you can do something tomorrow and you really want to focus on mobile, do that. Check out your load speed on, on, on mobile. In average, what I saw is seven seconds. Knowing that I remember, uh, you remember, maybe I told you that in average persons are spending 30 seconds on your mobile website. If uh, the person go to three pages on your website, we are already talking of 21 seconds awaiting. That the, that the page is loading. So this is a really an easy win, but if you don't fix that, it's, you can invest a lot on paid search or on other, uh, bring traffic, but it just won't work. Uh, another thing that is really nice um, is um, bounce rate, uh, because you know, where, you know how your traffic is coming but you don't know where they are living. Hmm. Screen size is not the best here. Here we go, bounce rate, okay. Here what we're seeing is that the bounce rate of this company, uh, so normally here you have la landing pages, and here you have a bounce rate. The bounce rate of the website is 50%. And some pages have a very high bounce rate especially on mobile, as I told you before, on some pages you will easily find a bounce rate of 80, 90 percent. And, and what I, I found in my uh, analysis is that it's linked with the load speed. So if you have a high load speed, there is a high bounce rate on the specific pages. So some pages on your, web, on your mobile website would maybe have a 20 percent load speed because it's, it's not consistent across the website. Some pages are loading much faster than others. So if you, if you look at the bounce rate per page and, and see, oh, there my conversion rate is really small, maybe it's because of my load speed. And actually we found out a lot of times that when you have a seven second in average load speed for your mobile website and some pages are much higher, well, this is the first reason why you're not having any conversions there. So uh, this, uh, again, I've been working with really big companies and, and Netherlands is one of the most advanced 
country uh, digitally wide uh, in terms of digital. I would, I'm sure I'm going to see the same in France or, uh, or in other countries. So this is something uh, mainstream, but where that you need to address to, to really win on mobile. Uh, can we get back to the presentation? Yes. Okay, load speed and bounce rate. Uh, so yeah, if you can do any calculation you want, but if you decrease your load speed from seven seconds to 3.5 on mobile, I'm pretty sure that your conversion won't increase by 50%, but it will have an impact, obviously. Um, yes, call to action, my favorite one on, on mobile. This is an easy win. Uh, this short screen is uh, coming from vodafone.co.uk. Uh, when, when, um, what they decided to do is that they realized that purchasing a mobile is, is quite long. It's, it's, it can be, you need to choose your smartphones and maybe your, your package, the number of minute data. So what they're proposing at some point in the checkout process is okay, you can carry on on the mobile website, so they call it secure checkout, but you can also click to call, so click to call is a third line down there. Uh, or the fourth one, if you have uh, some, some shops, find my nearest shop where you can convert. So now I, I, I heard like a lot of you, as I, as I was referring before, that a lot of you were struggling about calculating the uh, offline the impact of digital on offline sales. This will give you an indication. If you know how many people on your mobile website has been going, has been clicking on the fourth menu here, which is find my nearest store. You, let's say if you have um, 100 persons that are clicking there, you can assume that I'll, I'll at least half of them have been going and you know the conversion rate of the store, maybe, I don't know, 10%. So from there, you can assess the impact of digital to, to, to offline. It's just one example. Um, so um, once you have that implemented, you can track it on Google Analytics. So I would just show you how to do that. Can we please move on uh, demo, uh, please, again? Okay. Um, Again, when you uh, open your Google Analytics report and uh, you've, you know the menu, you go down, behavior, you see behavior, you have events. So when someone click to, click to call or find my nearest uh, store, it can be an event. You can uh, um, tag it as an event and then it can go on, on the Google Analytics. So here, uh, this is dummy data for uh, uh, is just a demo section. What we see in this case, those are the different events. So here there are nine events tracked on this website. Uh, one event is contact us. So we always have this contact us section on mobile website. So you can tag how many person are, are, are going there. What do we have? Also we have add to cart can be an event, but here you could have click to call, you could have what you think is useful for your business to, to track in terms of um, offline, online. So here we are answering two questions. Um, determine the, the right um, call to action for your mobile strategy. And secondly, by tracking it, you can determine how successful it is. Can we uh, switch back to presentation? Please. Hmm, 12 minutes left. Check out most successful product on mobile. What I, I notice sometimes that on, on mobile people were more interesting than on certain pr products than on, on desktop. Uh, this is something that you can look at. Um, so you can then push the most successful product that you have on mobile. Uh, this applies specifically for uh, advertiser with a lot, a lot of product where you don't have a lot of screen size or menu. Uh, size to, to, to direct the customer where you want. So, so this is uh, for time constraint, I won't uh, address this topic on, on Google Analytics, but it's really easy to find. Um, I can just go to pr the product section and, uh, on, on, on the mobile report that you will have created tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, last, we're going to try that. Okay, second exercise uh, before you guys leave to uh, back home finally. So again, uh, I will ask all of you to stand up. Uh, <laughs> take your mobile website. Sorry, your mobile phone. I'm also myself tired. So take your mobile phone and we will divide the room per two. Okay? So we have this side. This side will pick one of those, advert, um, those companies and we'll have to go to the checkout page without paying. Okay? But just go to booking.com, go find a hotel and just go to the checkout process till the end. Well, not till the end. Till the moment you don't want to pay. On the left side, we will do another thing. You will take your own website. You want, I want you to take your own website. So take, uh, up, take your mobile phone, check your website, and go to the checkout section, go to the payment page, and then when you are done, you sit down. When you are reaching the payment section, you just sit down. Okay, let's see how long does it take. So it is a payment page. No. I have 30 seconds already. When you're done, you just sit down. OK, I'd like you to stop and do not move. OK, you just uh, so here I'm, I'm a bit impressed, I have to say, because I'm seeing that you guys have a better mobile website than all of this. So it's good, you cannot sit down. So it took, it took roughly uh, here one minute and 20 seconds for all of you to achieve that. Um, we are far from the, the, the 30 seconds we were talking before. So this is my next point. You don't find this data on Google Analytics, sorry. You just have to do it yourself. Go through the customer journey and see how, how well is it going. So this is what I call time to action, which was the last point. So just quick remember, once we talked about those six points. So this framework, pick a customer, and go through those six points, check the metrics to have a sanity check, uh, load speed, bounce rate, segment for the conversion, and then you will be able to determine how well you're performing on this area. And this is crucial for your business because those six points is related to the full customer journey, and if you're really delivering well there and tracking the right metrics to improve this section, then you will have a competitive advantage. And this, uh, the data will help you a lot to improve that, but is also uh, knowing your customer and what they're doing. Um, so three points to summarize. Uh, determine a, from a framework. So there is Avinash one, there is this one, maybe you already have an internal one. Just find the one that is right for your business. I don't think there is one best or worse but just find the right. Get the basic right. I show you how to create a report, how to, to just track your only mobile traffic. And last but not least, uh, improve and win the game. This was it for me. Uh, we have seven minutes for a Q&A. Uh, I have uh, Android here. I guess you all know them after today. Any question before you go back home? Um, and maybe on the meanwhile, I can check the selfies to see if we get a, a winner. Any question? Nobody wants to catch? 
I was excited about throwing. <laughs> no? Nothing? Okay, guys. Uh, it was really nice uh, to be able to share uh, my knowledge with you. I, I really hope it was useful. Uh, I can easily say you know, on behalf of Google, I'm really happy to, to host you during those uh, two days. And uh, well, uh, have a safe trip uh, back home. Thank you.